major hack of the day. All right. So I'm Jeff. Hi. Hi. Yeah, we should do it. Hi, I'm Jeff. Hi, Jeff. There we go. All right. Um, I like playing CTF. I started playing CTF 2012. Um, went to a SANS conference and did, and a lot of people have probably had, you know, Ed Scotus. He's just absolutely awesome. He's the, one of the more dynamic SANS instructors. And at the end of his class, there was an incident response class. He had a little, hey, here's my network, hack it. And I went through and did it. And I was like, I know this is coming up. So I prepared the night before and planned a little bit on it and did fairly well with it. And from that point on, I was hooked. It was really easy from there. It was like, wait a minute, you're going to show me the network and I'm going to be able to figure out the puzzle that you presented in front of me. And this puzzle has real life ramifications. And done. I was over with from there. So the next thing I did is I went back home and I sent out an email to a couple of friends who were about to go to DerbyCon. And I said, hey, anybody going to DerbyCon this year? And they were like, well, I'm going to DerbyCon. I was like, you want to do this capture the flag with me? It's like, sure. And by the time that brief little question of, hey, will you come play with me? Turned in from that point, we had four people and we were going on the capture of the flag. And the, diff, the change there was pretty substantial because I didn't expect we were gonna do well. I was just going to have fun. And it turned into 30 some odd hours with the same group of four people, challenged on the same projects where people are bashing their head against the wall crazy things like a PCAP file that turns out to be an MP3 file. I don't know if anybody knew that. A PCAP, you can, you can rename an MP3 PCAP and it actually opens in Wireshark. No. It's absolutely crazy. So, but it will open in Wireshark. And then we, I, beat, I beat myself up for hours trying to figure out what the heck is this PCAP file, looking at the packets and finally ended up reading the MP3 specifications on Wikipedia. And it says it's a layer three frame. And I was like, frame, wait a minute, it's just frames in a, in a PCAP renamed it and of course now I'm listening to Michael Jackson's beat it and that is the, that's the answer for this particular challenge so um, it's the little things that you learn and the trials that you go through that build that sense of camaraderie amongst people on your team and make trying to play capture the flag an amazing experience the end answer on that was for our first time out that's Lucas on the left and me on the right we finished pretty good we were third out of 171 teams that year, which was like, what the heck? How did we manage this? And I think in a lot of ways, it was really due to us just being willing to not really sleep. Um, I think that's what helped out a lot with the points and a lot of capture the flags, it does help. As I've gotten a little older, I've learned, hey, it's okay to sleep on Friday night, Saturday night, little on the iffy side, but Friday night, you wanna go home and get some sleep. Um, you know, but it brought me to the other point which was Lucas and I each went home to our, to our respective towns. He was in Nashville. I was here in Raleigh. I went back to work, working as my sysadmin job in a very comfortable position with a company that as long as I showed up to work, they were happy to have me there. As long as they knew they could call me when things were broken, it was okay if I wasn't there. Um, it was comfortable, but I really didn't feel I was growing all that much. And I had a quote on my desk that I had looked at for years in the past, which was, when growth stops, decay begins. And I had to ask myself the question at that point, am I growing? Am I decaying by staying here? And honestly, it took me two more years staying in the same spot to answer the, that question and finally come to grips. Maybe I'm not growing. You know, maybe I just need to find a, a new place for me. So at that point, I basically said, Lucas, you got a job? And he goes, oh yeah, I've been, you know, I've totally, I got a job for you. Here, here's this company I'm working with. And I get the backstory on how he managed to get his bit. And apparently he went home after this, our capture the flag in a third place finish. His boss had him stand up in front of a user group and said, hi, this is Lucas over here. Lucas is on my team. He finished at DerbyCon in third place. And everybody got up and said, hey, great job, Lucas. And two days later, Lucas said, hey, boss, it's been nice working with you, but I got a call after that user group meeting. I have a new job and I'll be starting in a week. So, so for, you know, it was pretty quick for him to find a way to exit out. And, and as I heard that story, I was like, hey, Lucas, here's my resume. Find me a job. We've known each other for a while. We've spent hours and hours together. And that comes up a little bit later in the story here. 
But the key point that I start to bring up with capture the flag right now is everybody in the room knows the attackers are winning. And from a security perspective right now, we are not winning. Um, if you look at the breach diagram that I have down here in the bottom, as I'll actually, I can pull the website up. The, uh, if we look at the number of websites, and this is a great screen here for, what's that? Equifax. No, Equifax is not the biggest on that one. No, no. Yahoo, Yahoo, Yahoo was huge. So, but this website here, oh. I know, it's, it's a dumping ground. I know, it's a dumping ground. It's a dumping ground, really. Well, I, I know. So the, uh, I'm gonna give up on the website that I tried to get to. But if I could, wow. There we go. So this particular website is up there, which I can't seem to get pop up correctly on my internet connection here. If you bring that up and take a peek at it from the history back, you don't have to go back that many years. You go back to 2011 on that particular chart and the bubbles that are there, and it quickly devolves into, hey, there's nothing really going on. 2011, poof, everybody's getting popped. And that's where it is right now. And there aren't enough people, and the job that I have in my day job, I work for a consulting company, and I go out and I talk with clients. And when I first got the job, the people that were the more sage advice said, Jeff, it's bad out there. And I'm like, no way, it can't be bad out, out there. I've got two factor in my company that I'm currently with. We're all bottled. You can't, people can't be doing this worse. Oh my gosh, they are. It is horrible out there right now. There is a real strong lack of people that understand how to protect their networks and can conceptualize what an attacker might do and that are scared enough to actually motivate management and the other people in their group to do it the right way to prevent a hack from happening. And so many of these cases that I end up working on job, there isn't logging to be able to support even identifying who the people is, because it hasn't been turned on. The issue of password reuse is out of control. Um, I've worked cases where websites have been hit with four, five million attempts to log in. Where are all these credentials coming from? Well, it's all the stolen password breaches that we have from this list that are being replayed on websites over and over again that don't have two-factor authentication, where a certain percentage of you try a million accounts against a website, you're going to gain access. And that's going on horrible everywhere in the network, in the infrastructure right now. So something to point out that there aren't enough defenders. So how do we solve this? Well, we got to become evil for good. And a lot of us don't have positions where we are evil. And I think there's more than one person in this room that probably has a sysadmin role right now that would really has the experience that could really work well in a security profession and would like to understand that better. And you know, from that perspective, I've made that transition. I'd like to share with the capture the flag how you can do it too. If you don't play capture the flag right now, I want to encourage you to get out there and try it. You can't be a security person if you don't understand the attacker and the person you're trying to defend against. You have to understand what they're going after. What are the things that are important to them? Why do they do it this way? And you gain that insight through trying to do it yourself through Capture the Flag. Sun Tzu, oh, it's old advice, really old advice. It's still applicable today. So why CTF awesome? Why don't I just go spend five grand a week and go to SANS or get my employer to spend that money to go there? because it's expensive, it's, it can be kind of boring. I mean, I'm sure there's more than, how many people in here have been in a training class and wondered if they were the smartest person in the room? Yeah, teacher included. So, you know, you get those situations or you're in a training class and the instructor's really bright, but he's spending his time answering that one guy in the back who has all those questions that you, you know he shouldn't have been in this class. It simply shouldn't have been there. I've done those before. What's this black box on my Macintosh that pops up when I do that command? 
Oh, that's your command prompt. You know, those kind of things to the person who's next to you, who supposedly has been in the field for years and years. Frustrating. Learning at your own pace through the capture the flag on a weekend, it is the best dollar value down pat. I mean, well, look at it, 40 bucks. You can show up here. You can hack all weekend. You can find a friend who can join you with the hack. You can ask the organizers that are doing it for hints. You will learn so much. It is a fire hose of knowledge, but it is frustrating as get out. And that is the big part about it is finding that frustration that you're going to have and pushing through that frustration is the important part. And that's how you learn. That's the only way to do it. If you get the knowledge that's, that's given to you on a spoon, this is what the attackers do. It doesn't sink in. It doesn't sink in in the same way as if you did it on your own. Trains you to think evil like an attacker. What's exposed? All right, well, I did a port scan on this particular machine. I see this port, this port, and this port. What can I do with those? Do some research. You know, big part is Google's your friend. Learn. And okay, can I go over to um, one of the vulnerability sites? Can I look for um, an exploit that's already been published by somebody else for this particular bit? Researching all of those pieces helps you understand what services are likely to be exploitable in the industry. And as you learn those tactics um, and those, where those exposure points are, it helps you secure your own network as well if you're currently on the defense side because you've already seen that. So it works for attackers and defenders. So, and this, before I decided to move to more of a security role, this was really critical for me. Playing CTF helped me understand Dude, don't be a doofus. Yes, you do need a second service account. No, you can't reuse the password between those two service accounts just because it would be easier to start that next process. Um, employees, no, password one, yes, I know password one meets our security policy for passwords, yes, it does. It, it completely meets it, but it doesn't meet it. You know, and this is why, trying to remember those points uh, they can help you educate and doing the right thing. And when you're still forced with people doing the wrong thing, realizing the danger to your organization so that you can guide them towards doing the right thing. All right, here's the key page that I brought up before. CTF exposes you to people in your industry for hours. It's not a five minute deal where you come up to somebody and you shake their hand and go, yeah, it's nice to meet you. We're six months from now. If you were to say, hey, you got a job for me, they're gonna be like, I don't remember this guy. I have no idea who he is. I don't know what his skill set was. I don't even know if he's somebody I'd want to sit around with for five minutes. But when you spend hours and hours, or in the case for me, an entire weekend with Lucas, he knows who I am. He knows what my skills were. Later on, when I got this job where I am now with Lucas, I asked the question. I'm a little weirded out about this idea of taking a job with your company and nobody's interviewed me. I haven't met anybody face to face. The strangest experience ever being hired for this job. And I was like, um, Lucas, I'm, I'm, I'm weirded about it. And he's like, Jeff, you already had your interview. And I'm like, what do you mean I had my interview? He's like, remember back in 2012 when we sat together for an entire freaking weekend? You've had your interview. I know who you are. I can vouch for you. I can say what you're capable of. I know where your skills are. I know that you're gonna be an easy person for me to work with. And I know that if I wasn't at this company, I could call up Lucas and he would say, hey, yeah, I'm over at this company, or I know somebody else who can get you a job. It's building those professional relationships that go beyond just somebody you know who happens to be in the industry, but somebody you've spent time with, and in some ways, you've been in battle with. You're, you know, you're battle-tested, because you both were on the same team trying to accomplish what you needed to accomplish and score those points. All right, and there's the smiling Lucas and I. So the question comes back to, um, can I play too? And that's for you guys. So if you want to play, it's just down the hall. It's this isn't, it's isn't a complicated process. It's everybody in here who has a laptop. If you were to go in there, there's a table set up for the noobs. And it says right on the table, CTF noobs. If you were to sit down there, there's a virtual box image that somebody would be happy to give you to put right onto your laptop. If you had a, if you had a USB drive, eight gigs or larger, somebody would be happy to format that with Kali on it. And you can just start and go. And I would challenge everybody in here to go on in there and try and get more than zero points. Put your name on the scoreboard. Don't just wait till you get points. Put your name on the scoreboard now and fill it out and get yourself a couple of points. And the next time, try and get a couple more points. And if you want to really enjoy and understand 
how all of this works, I want you to look at somebody at the table and say, I'm doing this one. Would you like to do it with me? Invite someone else to join you. Far too often, we as a group of people are a little insular. A lot of us are introverts. We don't want to go through and look at someone else and try and say, can I, can I, can I join you? And at risk, well, God, they could say no. Well, it's really easy. Ask them if they'd like to join you. You're the one in control here. Nine times out of 10, they're going to say, yeah, I'd love to join you. I'm just here by myself, and I feel just as socially awkward as you do. <laughs> and they're going to welcome that type of a question from someone. So be the person who invites. You know, and, and uh, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to, be, you have to start to be great. And it's really a part of that just saying you need to take the first step towards understanding this. And then some people are in the back are going, but I don't know anything that's going to help uncapture the flag. I can't do it. They're flailing around. I can, I can see it internally. They have that going on already. You have the experience. You don't need this huge, deep body of knowledge. You're here to learn. Just by showing up to the conference, all of you have shown a willingness to understand things better than everyone else does and to try to better what we have going on. Or some of you in the back, maybe you're trying to tear stuff down, but we're going to ignore you for the moment. Um, you know, Linux, Windows, web development, these are probably things all of us have done just a little bit of, but you've probably done a little bit enough to add value to what's going on to the conversation there. Often for me and my role in playing capture the flag, I don't know all the tools. And I don't think, I always feel like a noob, because there's always another tool coming out that can do things a little bit better than the way it's been done before. But what I do get out of that is that I've got years and years. And it's like we were joking about the 25 years. Yeah, it's probably getting closer to 26. And I feel a little gray at times um, when I'm, you know, hell, I'm about, about to turn 50 here. And so I'll say that really. But at the same time, my kids go, Dad, you're old. But I don't feel old. I don't think I'm old. And I look at some of the, um, the experience that I've had over a lifetime compared, compared to a lot of my peers, and that I'm able to see things clearer than they are based upon that experience and that wisdom that's there. And I think that's really useful for any time of capture the flag or network defense because you can understand things globally better than other people can understand them at an easier, um, you know, a deeper level than they'll be able to see. Um, and I'm going down the list here. Malware analysis. This gets where it gets real specific. Cryptography. But here I'm going general. Project management. Man, I've been on a lot of capture the flag teams where everybody's doing this, oh, what are you working on? What are you working on? I don't know what I'm working on. I've been on teams, sadly, where two people have solved the same thing and both been excited at separate times. You know, <laughs> and it's just like, oh, no, so, you know, we want people to work together. And so there's a need, even if you're just a project manager, hey, how can I help the team out? There's a need, I put down your gopher. Oh my gosh, when you're trying to work really hard on this, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, can somebody get me a drink? That's an important role. I mean, that's the role that you want to have on the team where you have somebody who can handle that for you so that you don't have to be distracted in doing it and taking time out. So, key part on the capture of the flag. Try harder. Never give up. Yes. Google is your friend. Phone a friend. You probably have people in the industry. You probably have a friend who knows a little bit about something about this that's more than you. Call them up, ask. You know, I was asked earlier, I'm gonna be playing the capture of the flag this weekend. Sorry, I'm not gonna watch many of the talks because I just really enjoy playing the capture of the flag. And at 40 bucks, I'll watch the talks online later, sorry. Um, so I have friends that play capture the flag. I get stuck, I'm gonna call one of them up. And I'm gonna say, hey, can you help? I'm stuck here. Learn from the knowledge of others. Ask for hints. If you're a noob, asking for hints from the guys running the capture of the flag is awesome. They, they will take, they will, they want more people to be playing capture the flag just like I do. They would be happy to mentor you along the way and give you those little hints and say, I don't know where to start. And they'll point you totally in the right direction. So what do you need? Like I said, just need the laptop. Go down to Boxwood, it's right down the hall, end of the hall there. It's gonna be open at seven o'clock today. It's gonna to be open, I think, till uh, nine, 10 o'clock tonight, maybe even later. Generally, the wireless is on, so you could sit outside the room. And some of us do sit outside the room in the middle of the night and sit on the floor and just continue to hack away because you get involved in a pro problem that we really want to solve. And there's, like I said, there's a noobs table in there. If you're completely fresh on this and you just want to give it a try, 
go over and grab a seat there. Ask David. He's going to be helping out there. I'll be in the room as well. I can help out too for this evening. Good luck. <laughs>